Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode number 956, if you're keeping track. And topic today is about the pluses and minuses of life. <laughs> Simple as I put it. Um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine earlier that just, just inspired this chat, so hopefully we get some relevance from this. Um, this about, it's going to be about love and relationships, but also about life itself, because there's so many things in life we do this comparison of pluses and minuses to decide if we want to do something or not. So let me show, show an example right up front, so you know what I'm talking about. When you're looking at maybe um, a new home, or a new place to live, a new house, a rental, whatever you're doing, there's going to be pluses and minuses for the place. It might have beautiful, um, well-lit windows, but might have an electric, electric stove, not a gas stove, and you prefer it was a gas stove, so you've got pluses and minuses. And you'll find yourself in a place where you'll decide, based upon the um, teeter-totter of choices, of how many pluses versus how many minuses is what's important to you. Meaning that you'll say yes to something if there's enough pluses and less minuses versus other things. Does that make sense? That's kind of what I'm getting to here. Because in most areas of life, whether it's a career, a um, new city to live in, which I've done a few times, um, a place to live, which I've also done a few times, or it could be a new, um, new car even. Or getting a new car, a newer car, because it might be a used car. But the idea of having things you get, things you participate in, things you do, have a positive and negative qualities about them. As in, things that you really love and things you don't like so much. And you have this thing where you'll decide on a, well, I was going to say you'd almost use settle for, and this may be one of the little keys, hint, hint, that you will settle for what works for you better than something else. So if you're comparing two, like I said at the beginning, like you're looking at a new place to live, you may have two choices to look at. And basically, you look at the choices and say, okay, what's better? Than the, which is better? But the, but the better choice might be because of what you decide there's more pluses and less minuses, or I should say the minus is not as critical to your one than they are on the other. So you might be deciding based upon the lesser of evils. Yes, I'm using that term, the lesser of evils. Where because in one place, you may have a lot of positive things, but the negative things are not as critical to you as the secondary choice, which has maybe as many positives, but maybe the negatives are more impactful. Why I'm talking about this up front is because I believe a lot of people use that comparison scale when it comes to relationships. And I'm going to break that one down in a moment. So stay tuned for that. So just to get the understanding so you understand where I'm coming from. This is something we're talking about. I was talking to a friend of mine today about it because she's looking at a place, um, place to live differently than where she is now. And she was comparing how they fit together. You know, versus what's good about this versus what's not so working about this. What's good about that one is not so much bad about that one. So it was that... Um, what's I'm looking for? The comparison was really interesting. Hi, Stacy. Nice to see you in broadcast. And so this understanding is that we use that comparison skill, that com that plus and minus thing. I mean, the title was not very, very clear. I can probably tell. In so many areas of life, again, career, getting a car, new city you live in, and in a lot of cases, your relationships too, which I believe is an error in approach. I'm going to break that one down again more clearly. But I want to just make sure I tease out this point more fully for you, so you understand where I'm coming from. The dance we have with life is one what we tend to choose based upon this, again, teeter totter, positive, negative. It's the way we live life. I mean, to be honest, ooh, let's play with this one. <laughs> Our political choices. <laughs> this is going to upset some people right off the bat. Now, I'm, I'm going to be apolitical in this, but the thing is, a lot of people make their political choices based on the lesser of evils than what they really, than rather than what they really want. Right now, we're dealing with a situation in our political arena for this year where people are going to vote for something because they don't want to vote for something else. They're so against something else. In fact, they're, excuse me, let me phrase it another way. They're so against what they don't want that they'll vote for anything other than that. So that's an extreme case, I know. But it also is true in the area of, of housing sometimes. Like, I know... Okay, let's get personal. <laughs> As I said, I've moved a few places. I've actually lived in four different countries. So I've had some travels over my life. And I know that when I kept coming out to England because uh, let me give you a very short, short synopsis I was living I was, I, when I was out of college I lived in, in Germany for about a year and a half two years in Hamburg and I lived in Germany for about six months yes indeed Trump is polarizing in America that's definitely America I'm surprised it didn't happen in England with, with Boris Johnson because he's very similar vein anyway that's an odd topic I'm going to stay tuned to my, my talk but thank you Stacey for the input we should talk about it at some point um, so I was living in different countries coming back to England after each term and in fact the last the time I was in um, Antwerp, Belgium, 
I was commuting back and forward every week. I had to fly out there Monday and come back Friday for six months. So every time I came back to England, I felt less and less connected, less and less invested, less and less wanting to be there. So my, my minuses were very stacked up in England. I didn't belong there anymore. But I didn't have anything that was definitely focused on where I was going. And all I had, this is, clear, this is true, all I had in my mind was somewhere where they spoke English. That was all I was focused on. I wanted to live somewhere outside of England where they spoke English because I was lazy. I didn't want to learn another language. I already knew a little bit of German. I always knew a little bit, a bit of, um, well, in Belgium, it was mostly English I was speaking there. But the thing is, I was clear I wanted to be, be somewhere other than where I, were, where I was. So I was being pushed to, it was like, the way that Reverend Michael talks about it at Agape is, it's like the pain pushes till the vision pulls. And it was kind of that theme for me. In my life at that point, I was clear that I was enjoying being outside of England, but I didn't know where I wanted to go. So I was basically pushing against England to be somewhere else. And so what happened, thankfully, was, I found a job in Los Angeles, which was a pretty high, high, high positive list at the time. I didn't have a clue at the time what it was going to be like. Um, basically, I was just to, to spin the other side of it was I was really actually playing the role of attraction without knowing it, because what I'd seen on television for America was all LA type shows. So when I thought about going to America, because they spoke English in America, at least a version of it, <laughs> the West Coast is what I saw. I didn't see Chicago or Florida or. New York even. I mean, everything I saw was like West Coast based with California shows, I think. I mean, Starsky and Hutch was LA. Chips was LA. There were a few shows back in the early 80s that were like that when I came out to America. So, America became my choice. Now, I'm grateful looking back that it worked out better than I planned. But I've certainly, in my life in career choices and job choices, because I've switched careers as well, had experiences where the choice I made was based upon how many negatives or how many, how many, how many minuses there were to do something else. So I thought we'll do this in steps. It's less minus, more positive. So let me jump into the area of relationships now, because this is where a lot of people make choices too. Because a lot of people I know choose a relationship out of a place of settling. Because you settle down in a relationship, don't you? <laughs> but the truth for me and the work I do with my clients and do myself is it's a lot easier nowadays when we start to understand our truth and who we are to actually make better choices because we don't settle anymore. However, however, yes, this is the love boat too. Yeah, right, exactly. Thank you. Yes, Stacey, yes. Um, what was I thinking of? Um, oh, Fantasy Island. That was the other one. Fantasy Island. That was Hawaii. That wasn't, that wasn't LA, but anyway, another show. But it was always sunshine and it was beautiful weather type stuff. Yes, yes to no settling. Exactly, Stacey. Thank you for the input, by the way. <laughs> so this thing about choosing relationships... I've, I've seen people and I, I've done it myself, uh, yeah, mm, a few times. So I'm own, owning this one myself, is choosing relationships that were not as bad as other ones. And that's the thing we do, we have this bad habit, the again, settling thing, where we'll choose things that are, hi Sue, nice to see you. We'll choose things, hi Lauren, good to see you as well. We'll choose things that are basically less painful than other ones. Rather than choosing things that are more for what you want, that's why I'm talking about the plus and minus thing, because the minus is usually a painful. As I said again, Michael, Reverend Michael says, the pain pushes to the vision pulls. We avoid pain, not necessarily because we want pleasure, but because we don't want pain. So we're basically going backwards to what we want. And the challenge is we start backing into things that aren't where we look, is, I say another way, sorry. We back away from things, so we're not looking where we're going. And that's not good. So my, my, um, there's a couple of points I want to make. One of the points, <laughs> like, how do I explain this? Yeah. Uh, one of the points, though, is to really get clear about what you want first. Because the challenge with a lot of people is they can't, won't, excuse me, not can't, won't be comfortable being single. They'd rather be in a relationship than be single. Because for them, their pluses and minuses are such that being, being alone is way more minuses than being single. Excuse me. Being alone is way more minuses than being with somebody, anybody, rather than being alone. So again, it's driven by pain, not by pleasure. So understanding that you can have actually choose for what you really want, if you're willing to let go of the avoidance feeling, because this is what it is, the avoidance of dealing with what you think is so bad. I have learned after being single for a long time that being single actually is one of, one of my preferable states. So there isn't a sense of being lonely. Yeah, that went out the window. I mean, when I was younger, yeah, I felt lonely when I was alone. Like lonely and alone were tied together. Whereas I know now, that's good. Nice, Stacey. So you're okay with, sing with single, but now enjoying dating. More than you expected alive again. That's, were you dead before? <laughs> I'm sure you weren't, but I understand. I, you know, I think I know where you're coming from on that, so I appreciate that. Yes. So the, so the thing about choosing to date or relate or be in a relationship 
for me, as I've said in all, most of my talks for the last three years, is yes, is very passionate about people choosing relationships consciously. Because it's tempting sometimes just to swipe across dating apps, to go through dating sites, to do other things like that, just find somebody, anybody, that obviates or, or um, avoids feeling alone. Like, I'd rather be with anybody rather than, you know, was it, um, was the Beatles song about, um, I was help, I need anybody. That was kind of the idea, theoretically. <laughs> we should talk to Stacey, I'm kind of curious what you mean by that. So the thing about this piece is that we have the choice, we do have the choice to not date, to not get into a relationship. We can actually choose to be single, what a concept. But most people look at single, especially when they've been in a relationship or when they came out of a relationship, sometimes being single is the most painful thing they think they can imagine, but it's all imagined. Painful thing they imagine, it's all imagined, that's kind of obvious. But we do, we imagine worst, state, worst case scenarios for being single, like, oh, I'll be left out, we won't be joining into things. There are certainly times I felt myself being outside the group because I wasn't part of a lot of couples. But it wasn't painful. It was just an awareness. And I've learned to really become comfortable in my skin as a person who's on their own. And in fact, I've said a few times in my broadcast, my work is so key to me, my teaching and, and coaching and speaking is something that's so vital to me that I will not give that up for anything, including a relationship. In fact, any relationship I'm going to be in has to be additive to that and come together and add to the skills and tools and teachings I have already. Because if I date somebody who hasn't done their own work, I end up coaching them. And that's not that's, that's messy. So I wouldn't want to do that. So I'd rather choose being single. So that is, hmm, that's actually the other way around of pluses and minuses. Okay, just own that one. I'm, either, I'm happily in the plus column for being single than being in relationships that aren't serving me. I guess I just shot myself in the foot on that one because I just explained backwards. <laughs> so, well, actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> So let me try and say it this way. <laughs> it's like, oops. <laughs> I'm going to say it that way. So let me say two things. There is definitely the awareness of having understanding that there's plus and minus on both sides because I've had my own. Um, but also at the same time, as a reminder is, if you're choosing to be single, then at least make a choice about what you want to have if you want to be in a relationship. Meaning that to be single just to, to avoid being with any just relationship isn't functional. It's just like, no, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, I'm going to be single. If you really want to be in a relationship, and for most of us, I think we do. Some people don't. I know, I know from the ultimate, I want to be in a relationship. But I, don't have to, I don't have to be in one. It's a choice. Like I want to be, I don't have to be. Understanding that I can get clear about my vision, and you can too, of what I really want to have in the relationship. Because when you start doing that, and I'm, because I'm actually doing vision boards on my, on, my work, on my own work right now, because I'm doing this for my new BFF masterclass. I'm doing my own work to show the people in the class how I'm doing it so they can follow the example. So knowing that what, what I want is high enough, quali high enough quality, high enough resonance, high enough attraction, high enough growth, all these different things, becomes a vision to focus on. Again, as Michael said, pain pushes to vision pulls. I've got a clear vision of what I want in relationship. I'm documenting in a way that can give me inspiration every day is what vision boards are for. And at the same time, I'm okay being single. There is no um, plus and minus on that for me now. I'm really clear that I stand in, in respect and appreciate being on my own and what I do and who I am. And a lot of people around me are dating and I'm watching them date now and they look at me like I'm weird because I'm not dating. I'm clear that's the choice I've made. It's not, a, it's not a positive minus anymore. It used to be. It's not anymore because I now know why I'm here and what I'm about. And the relationship that I have a vision for is definitely available to me, definitely out there, definitely in, in intention, but it's not in my control. So I let it go. Now, this is... <laughs> not easy for people I know some people go you can't do it that way it doesn't work that way it's like yes it can but you've got to be willing to face your own amazing self I put it that way I was going to say demons I'm like no the other way around when you start to learn how amazing you really are first of all you won't settle anymore thank you thank you Stacey I appreciate it yes I, I've been going to Gapi for 25 years now so it's been a resource place for me for some years so and thank you, and you're welcome for my consistency and support. It's my pleasure, my joy, and part of my work. So to summarize this and to put it into a nutshell, it's important to know what you really want. Because when you start focusing, and it doesn't have to necessarily be about love and relationships. It can be about career, location, housing, any of those things. When you know what you really want and you focus on the energy, what really lines up for that, then you, you step above the teeter-totter of plus and minus. You step into intention and to vision and to creation. 
it's what I help my clients get to more and more. And that's one reason I created the BFF Masterclass, which I'll put the link in the comments, because it really is a place where you start to discover what really works for you and you create a vision and a visceral experience of what that is, so that when you start to master your own self, your own love, you start to learn how amazing you really are. Yes, you are amazing. When you start to realize how amazing you are, then life changes because you start to set a standard and a, and, and, um, and a baseline that's higher than you've ever been before. Because all of us, I believe, to a large degree, let me say another way, oh, another, oh, okay, yeah. For those of us who are caring people, who, are, who, who avoid being ego-driven, we tend to rate ourselves lower than we really are. There are people who overrate themselves who are ego-driven, no names mentioned, who are very visible, but the thing is they're so clearly false idols. <laughs> Leave that one alone. But understanding when you stand in the place where you honor yourself, respect yourself, and raise your own self-regard because you are worthy of that, because you are, that changes everything. So if that tempts you or tantalizes you, please check out my BFF Masterclass, which is barryselby.com forward slash BFF. The link will be in the comments because it may be the cornerstone to make your, life, your new year an amazing experience. And I do want to encourage you to look at your own choices you're making in your life, whether it's, again, the environment you're in, the car you drive, the people you hang out with. And are you doing those choices from a place of plus and minus? Or are you stepping above that to a place of a clear intention? That's the third choice. And that's the work I help my clients with. If you want some of that, message me. Again, link will be in the comments for my BFF Masterclass. Do take this to heart. You can have what you want if you're willing to do the work. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, this is my message of the day. Every day I do this, by the way, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. You can watch me every day at 5 p.m. Um, sometimes it moves around a little bit, but usually it's 5 p.m. Um, if you want help in this area, message me and reach out to me. This is my daily commitment to serve, to inspire, and to awaken. That's why it's nice, episode number 956. If you haven't seen my broadcast before or you want to watch the replays, if you go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, you can watch all my replays, although only about two or 300 are visible because Facebook's like that. However, I have a backup on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash barryselby, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there, which is messages of masculine, where all of these broadcasts get saved and restored and um, archived, so you can watch them all there. Um, and that's about it. If you haven't seen broadcast before, join me every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Check out the replay places. And if this resonates for you, check out the link in the comments. This is my gift, my offering, my service. And it's a commitment. It's a three-month journey, deep dive. That's why it's set up the way it is. But check out barrysober.com forward slash BFF and have a look. And with that, um, that's about it. I will see you again tomorrow for more fun and games. <laughs> I appreciate you being with me and look forward to seeing you again soon. So as, as I always suggest, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.